Growing up in a small town made California seem like it was a really magical, uh, faraway place. And, you know, every month and when we got uh, skateboard magazines and music magazines, that was sort of our connection to the outside world. And uh, I had paper routes and I picked rocks on farms and picked weeds for seed farms and did any, any kind of odd jobs to, to buy skateboards and fans tennis shoes. And the poor kid is the hungrier kid or the kid that's, you know, he's got one skateboard and it's all chewed up and uh, he rides that thing all day and he's the best skateboarder in the town. As much as my life has changed over the last 20, 25 years, especially since um, you know starting Pearl Jam, I think uh, not a whole lot's changed for me in terms of the things that really interest me and the things that really drive me. I still, I still really want to just learn how to play my instrument better and write a better song, and I still want to be a better skateboarder. And uh, you know, I feel in a lot of ways lucky that. I'm almost 50 years old and I can still kind of do all those things and I don't think there's anything like that thing of walking up to the edge of a, a new ball and looking at it and going like, oh my God, like I can't believe this is, you know, that they built this thing and they built it so good and you have that 14 year old shake where you're so excited that your body can't contain itself and skating still gives me that feeling. I, it, you know, it takes me back to that 14 year old kid who you know, isn't jaded at all and just is full of wonder and that's, that's been a great thing about skating. I'd only been to Pine Ridge once before, and that was probably like late 70s when I was a kid. And my memory of it when I was a kid was that it was kind of a darker, more poor version of the town that I grew up in. Really severe alcoholism in the town that I grew up in, and, uh, and a lot of it's just isolation. And I think uh, with that isolation, you have to start with the youngest generation, and you have to give that youngest generation hope. And I think a way to break the the mold of alcoholism and the, and the drug use. I think if you give them another outlet um, and you give them, I think with that outlet you give them hope and I think you know, building a skate park is that thing. You know, most small towns have basketball teams and football teams at their high schools and there's that outlet but then there's a whole other group of kids typically that are interested in, in things that are more artistic and uh, you know music and skateboarding and those things are all programs that have been cut a lot more in the last 10 years. Every kid is different and you can't shove every kid in into a round hole because a lot of the kids are triangle shaped and square shaped and Skateboarding, I think that's for a lot of the triangle-shaped, square-shaped kids. I don't think there's a better peer group than to be out with, you know, your three or four buddies and pushing each other to learn a new trick. And as a kid, you, you know, that's such a powerful thing. Like you, there can be that one, there can be that one day where you do something amazing, and everybody in your group is, is, you know, propping you up, and that that can be a life changing, you know, those can be life changing events. Um, you know, confidence is such a huge part of, of, of growing up and 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 you know becoming the person that you're going to become. Later on in life when they're doing something and they're not sure that they can do it, they can go back and go like, wow, I remember when I could barely stand on a skateboard and three weeks later I was doing a grind in the bowl. And I think it's as simple as that. I think it's a really simple 
formula, but I think it's about getting confidence from somewhere. And I think, I think having a skate park in your town and having a group of kids that you skate with that you know push each other, I think that is going to give these kids a confidence that could turn one of them into a tribal council leader or a senator of South Dakota or whatever it is. I've been involved with building probably 10 skate parks, and I've never witnessed appreciation like I did at Pine Ridge. I mean, I, you, know, you know, the blanket ceremony that they had, and, and the food that they brought, and the food that they cooked us later on, and the invitation that if we ever came back to bring our friends and they can stay with them, and all of us who were outsiders that came in to help facilitate building the park, I think we probably got more out of it than they did. They got a skate park, but the welcome that we got and the appreciation that we got back and the love that we felt, I, I, you know, I don't think there's anything better than that. You go into a culture and you, you learn all the great things that they're doing within that culture and it makes you want to kind of have that be a part of you and how you treat people and how you do things. I want to take those things that I've witnessed there and and pass them on.